Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. So this is part two of question number nine and it's one of the questions that the grade 10 academic students are working on for their summative. Um, so let's talk about where we were. The question, it was the question about lava being ejected from the Stromboli volcano. Um, and we're given this equation that represents the height of lava in meters compared to time in seconds. Um, so it said to sketch the relation and then there were some questions. So the first thing we did was we looked carefully at the equation given and realized that we were given a factored form equation. And when we're given factored form equation, here's the process for drawing a good sketch. First, you find the roots. You use the roots to find the vertex. If you need to, you find the y-intercept. And from there, you can usually make a pretty decent sketch. So where were we? Well, we discovered by factoring and solving. Well, we didn't have to factor, but we solved and found that the roots were at 0 and 11. We took the midpoint, which was 5.5, and that means that the axis of symmetry was t equals 5.5, and it therefore means that the vertex looks like this, 5.5 comma something. So how do we find that thing? Well, we take t equals 5.5, and we sub it into the equation for wherever t exists. And then we solved for h. And this is what we got, a vertex of 5.5 and 151.25. So now that I have roots and I have vertex, I can draw a pretty decent sketch. And by the way, why aren't I talking about finding the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept occurs when x is 0 and x is 0 is a root, so I have the y-intercept. <clears throat> so I made this kind of, you know, decent but quite hideous sketch. Um, certainly, you know, the shape of my parabola would uh, cause your teacher to have concerns, um, but it's definitely harder to draw on a tablet than it is with your pencil on paper. So again, here's my roots. My roots are at 0 and 11. I have put this red dotted line to represent my axis of symmetry, and so the vertex is right here at t equals 5.5 and height equals 151.25 approximately. And so there's my pretty decent sketch. And then I said that during the break between video one and video two, I would make a lovely sketch. Ta-da! So obviously this is using um, graphing software. In this case, the program's called Graphmatica. It's available as shareware. I think you should find it if you want it. Um, and so there's the beautiful sketch showing again the roots at 0 and 11 and the height is just past 150 because it was 151 point whatever. Okay, so now that we've drawn our sketch, let's see what else we're supposed to do. Find the maximum height reached by the lava. Well, we already know that answer, right? We found the vertex to help us draw the sketch and so we already had the answer to B. So it was 151 meters. So rounding it to the nearest meter would be 151 meters. And again, we already did that math. So make sure that your teacher sees you do that math. So you wouldn't just write 151. You would make sure that you have the math written like I have in the other video. C, how long does it take to reach maximum height? Well, look at your video. <laughs> Sorry, look at your sketch. Here's a maximum height. How long does it take? Well, think about, again, that axis of symmetry, it must take 5.5 seconds. Again, you know that because you know that your vertex looks like this. So this is how long it takes to get to maximum height. So it takes 5.5 seconds. D, um, is the length of time that the lava is in the air twice the answer from part C? So in other words, um, so twice 5.5 is 11. Is the lava in the air for 11 seconds? Yeah, it starts at 0 and 5.5 up, 5.5 down. So the answer is yes. So my answer for D is yes. Explain why. Uh, well, this doesn't happen with every parabola. So for example, if we had um, someone cliff diving, and they started here and then they dove off a cliff, they might do something like this. And you can see that their maximum height would be here, but that's not half of the time that they're in the air. They're actually falling longer than they are going up. 
So it's not an automatic yes to this question. It depends on your actual sketch. So why is it true in this case? Well, it has to do with where your y-intercept is. If your y-intercept is also a root, then your parabola is perfectly symmetrical about your roots. Well, no. Your parabola is always perfectly symmetrical about your roots. But if your y-intercept happens to be a root, then the time it takes to go up is equal to the time it takes to go down. So if I had to explain this, I would just say um, that the y-intercept, well, I shouldn't say y-intercept because we're not dealing with y in this question. I should say that the h-intercept is also a root. And so therefore, um, time going up is equal to time going down. So you'd probably take a little more time than me to explain that to your teacher, but you know, I've got other videos to make, marking to do, etc. Also, uh, I hear um, Diablo 3 is out, so you know, <clears throat> stuff to do. Okay, so I hope that helped with this question. We're all done it. Not so bad. And if you have any questions, post it in the comments. Come see anybody in the math department. Google it. Uh, okay, happy studying.